السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them To bless every one of us to grant us goodness in this dunya as well as the next Ameen my brothers and sisters, the solutions to all our problems are within revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Many times we go through issues and problems and we're looking for solutions where we will never find them. People are looking for happiness and they look at the prohibitions of Allah and they want to find happiness in that which Allah has prohibited it's not going to come. It's very short lived, a fake sense of perhaps ecstasy that a person might feel. And thereafter there is regret for a long, long time. No matter what it is, be it someone who wants quick money in the wrong way, they pinch or they are corrupt or they have bribed or they have stolen. They will live with that fear for a long, long time. There will be no blessings in that money. There will never ever be a moment where the person is actually very happy without any worry or concern. But when you hand your affairs to Allah, even if you are struggling, even if you are going through challenges, your health, your wealth, your family, you will be such a happy person. You will be smiling within you, let alone just on your face. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that happiness. If we look at the Quran, it has in it a lot of messages that are very, very powerful. They are reminders when Allah blesses you, he knows what you deserve and he knows what perhaps is better for you right now. Sometimes you and I don't deserve luxury in this world because it may result in us turning away from Allah. So Allah says, I'm not going to give it to you. And you are so upset and angry and praying and asking and saying, Oh Allah, I want this. I want this. I want this. Allah says, I know I'm not going to give it to you because I love you. If I'm going to give it to you, it's not going to be good for you. You and I will not have a good relationship. You will forget me. You will go away from me. You are going to drop into sin and that which is deviant such that in the hereafter, the eternal life will be lost. The best thing, let me let you not have what you want for a few years and then when you come to me I will give you everything you want subhanallah but man especially those who don't believe Allah says nay you love that which is right in front of you and you forget that which is to come which is eternal you love this worldly life such that in it you want what you want but you are forgetting that the eternal life sorry you love this temporary life and you are forgetting that the eternal life that is to come is the reality it is what you need to work for what is your wealth going to do for you do you know that wealth when it is given to you is a very big test from allah children when they are given to you they are a very big test from allah listen to what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-anfal verse number 27 يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تخونوا الله والرسول وتخونوا أماناتكم وأنتم تعلمون. O you who believe, O you who believe, do not attempt to deceive Allah or to deceive His Messenger. You won't be able to. You are deceiving yourself. What do you think you're doing? Oh, you who believe, be loyal, be faithful unto Allah and His Messenger. You say, La ilaha illallah. You know it means there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, but you are worshipping everything besides Allah and you are not worshipping Allah. That is the essence of Tawheed. To worship Allah alone. I bear witness. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Then I am worshipping everyone besides Allah and everything besides Allah. That is unrealistic, unacceptable. Then I say, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. 
And his message means nothing to me. Subhanallah. Imagine when you believe someone is the messenger of Allah, you would know that that message he's coming with for you is an honor. It is a privilege. Really, we are privileged that the man reached us. Imagine someone sends you a letter from somewhere and the postman looks for you, finds you and delivers it in your hand. A very important message. You're going to open it and be grateful, grateful to the one who sent the message and grateful for the fact that he chose the best of the messengers that the, he actually found you and gave it to you. Honor. So the same applies. The Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, it is an honor that it came to us through this blessed messenger. We are saying, Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but do we really consider him a messenger Allah says don't deceive don't attempt to deceive Allah or his messenger you are not going to get anywhere if you try that and Allah says do not betray you know the term khiyana refers to betrayal do not betray Allah or his messenger do not betray what you have been entrusted with, amana, amana meaning a trust, whatever you've been entrusted with, primarily the shahada that you hold, the deen, the faith that you have, don't betray, don't be fake, be as genuine as possible, where you have gone wrong, quickly make amends, and understand that this life is definitely a test. I've said it again and again, that you know what, the fact that you didn't choose who you were born to, where you were born, where you came, what color you were, already proves that there is an examiner testing us here. We are not in control. The questions are asked by the examiner, not by the one being tested. So you choose very little. You actually choose how to respond to the situations you were put into by the examiner. Why are you black? Why is someone else white? Why is another person red? Why yellow? Because Allah wants to test you. That's all. If it was for you, each one would have chosen his own color or nationality. But Allah says, no. Will you respect each other? Will you reach out to each other? Will you understand that there is no value for a color besides just that it is a test from Allah for you, for I, for every one of us? And the same applies to everything else. Your financial level, when a deal comes to your business, wallahi, it's a test. Allah wants to watch, is it going to make you arrogant? I promise you, when money comes quick, it is a very, very big test. Those who have not worked hard for their money, I would like to think the majority of them, it messes around with their attitude. It makes them think that they are ruling the world and they don't understand. Allah is the one in charge. They think they can do what they want because as the olders used to say, the elderly used to say, they don't know how many twenties make a hundred for them. It was just one twenty and it was a hundred for them. Subhanallah. Those who worked hard, they know how many ones make one hundred. May Allah make it easy because they earned it one by one by one. But if you got ten thousand one shot, you don't even know. It's a test from Allah. I'm not saying they are bad in attitude, but I'm saying it messes with their attitude. It's a challenge. When you are a multi-billionaire and you can come and polish the shoes of someone else, Wallahi, you are a man who is worth looking at. You are a man who has achieved because your money humbled you. It brought you down. When you are a powerful figure and you can still greet and talk to the people in a proper way, you are someone who in the eyes of Allah is trying to pass that test. If you don't have what you want and it turned you away from Allah, you are as big a loser as a person who has what he wants and it turned him away from Allah. The common factor is both of them turned away from Allah due to the condition they were put in. What's the difference? This man got so much, he forgot Allah. That man doesn't have what he wants. He forgot Allah. He's angry with Allah. So what's the difference? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us happy. When Allah gives you, say Alhamdulillah. That is why on the day of judgment, a caller will call. Where are those who used to praise Allah upon all conditions? Bring them forth. They deserve VIP treatment here. Those who used to praise Allah in good condition, in bad condition, it didn't change their relationship with Allah. It made them better. You ask me who is struggling. I tell you the richest of the lot are struggling more than the poorest. Those who have seen more money in their lives find it more difficult to adjust than those who never saw that money. Their life was always the way it is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us.